Hey everybody, Jerry in the lab again today. In the last video, I showed you guys how you were able to program an Altera Max CPLD from the 90s, and the EPM 7128 SLC84. That was the device that we programmed. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can connect and detect two separate Altera Max 7000S devices in the same circuit using a single USB blaster over JTAG. So that's today's video. Let's get started, here we go. Now before we get started, uh, my workbench is a disaster again, as always. Carl, what do you think? How's the bench looking over there? Scary? <laughs> All right, we should probably clean it. Okay, everyone, so here's the circuit from the last video. If you haven't watched that video, I recommend you go check it out. Uh, link is in the description, but it's also above. Now, in the last video, we had a counter essentially set up here with a, a, a latch so that when the counter would count from zero all the way up to nine, as soon as it would hit nine, it would stop and halt. Now, I received a whole bunch of messages from you guys, and you were saying, Jerry, why don't you just take the entire circuit this all the 7400 series logic devices and implement the entire circuit into the CPLD um, and I did that intentionally just to demonstrate again as I mentioned in the last video at the beginning I said this was more just like a proof of concept to show how the CPLD worked uh, and so uh, that's why I did that uh, but today just to show you guys you guys were all kind of wanting to see that uh, so I went ahead and I have removed all of the 7400 series components that we had. And what I've done is I've redesigned the entire uh, counting circuit for the seven segment display. So changed it up a little bit just for variety. So um, we've got our USB blaster that we're going to use. And we're going to hook that up, plug it in and program the device. So we'll go ahead and do that now and we can check out the accounting sequence. Okay, so we've got a digital circuit here again and I've modified it slightly. I've uh, changed our counter to a 74163 and that's a four bit binary counter, but it's not an up down counter. So with this circuit, we're just running it directly off the clock and it will count up. And we also have the uh, 7442 and that's the BCD to uh, decimal uh, decoder. And so this is essentially monitoring our data bus uh, coming from the counter. And that's so when it reaches the value of nine, we get a low pulse on this line, uh, which is then fed to the load uh, pin on the 74163 four bit binary counter. So essentially what that does is it resets the counter to zero, uh, which is the default set for the inputs here. So we're going to compile this and then we'll validate our pin assignments within pin planner, uh, but I'm pretty sure I have that already set up. Pin planner. And here we are. We have the max 7000 CPLD. Again, it's the EPM 7128S LC84. 
and that's the JTAG compliant device, uh, which we're programming here over JTAG. And so there you can see I've added the clock input here, and we've um, added a, a line there, a clock line on pin 83, which I have wired. And then we have our uh, same uh, outputs uh, that we used last time for the seven segment display. And of course here we have our JTAG programming interface for ISP. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close this compile here back to our block diagram. And so now if we go to tools and programmer, okay, everything's ready to go. So we'll go ahead and hit start. And there it goes. Okay, so there are the, you can see how the uh, USB blaster lit up and it ran the program. So now we'll just connect our clock here. I had removed it from our clock pin on 83. And there we go. It's counting up. Now, what I've done here is I've added a 7404 inverter uh, IC at the top here, and I've fed the output from the 555 timer uh, through this inverter just to clean up the, um, the, the clock signal coming from our 555 timer just to make it a nice square wave before it goes into the CPLD. Um, now you probably could clean up the signal a little bit using a, a capacitor potentially on the 555 timer circuit, uh, but uh, I just chose to use a uh, a 7404 uh, inverter I see uh, and it's just again it's just to clean up the signal a little bit make it a nice square wave and, and that's happening we have to make sure that that happens externally uh, before it goes into the CPLD so that's the reason that I have that here um, yeah and so there it goes it's uh, running away and we've got our uh, JTAG interface here at the top and that's this part of the circuit here and now you'll see here that I've added uh, some uh, pull-up and pull-down resistors. These are uh, uh, 10K ohm uh, resistors. And so you'll get some circuits that'll have these pull-up and pull-down resistors just there, um, you know, to make sure that you don't have anything, uh, any signals floating on the JTAG interface. And it just makes sure that the signals are clean and that it programs properly. So, uh, yeah, so that's pretty, pretty awesome. And we used our, this is the official USB blaster um, from Altera. And uh, that's another thing I wanted to just quickly show you guys is uh, the variety of different JTAG pods that they have. So again, this is the official uh, USB blaster and this is the Rev-C model. And they have a USB blaster too. That's a newer version, I think, that was uh, released not too long ago. Uh, but this one here uh, is the uh, official one from Altera. Um, now, one of the one of the ones that you're probably most familiar with, if you're a student, uh, college and university, these are super popular. These are just like a knockoff uh, unit from China, and they're super cheap. You get them on eBay for you know ten, maybe fifteen dollars. Um, and uh, they work, uh, but again, it is a knockoff, and so it's not an official one. And you know, the odd times if you if you have uh, an official one and this knockoff one, and you're interconnecting between them, and you're using both, you're going to run into a lot of driver issues. So just uh, be aware of that that um, um, you might have to swap out or change the driver if you if you have, start to have. Uh, issues with uh, the USB blaster detecting it properly. Um, probably one of the oldest ones is this model here. This is called the Altera Bit Blaster. And it's got there, it's got the JTAG interface there, just like the USB blaster. However, this one is a serial uh, connection, and this is the older DB25 uh, interface. Uh, connector for serial for RS-232 and that was way early 90s and that was the standard that they used and it uh, you know accepts all the different baud rates is dictated based on how you uh, set the dip switches here uh, on the side uh, switch that they have on this unit on this enclosure and then uh, it works exactly the same way it's just a different interface so that's probably that's probably the oldest one I have uh, and that's a an RS-232 unit 
as well there's another model that was called the Master Blaster and this one had both serial uh, using a DE9 connector but it also had USB 1. That was the very very early stages when USB had just come out and so they were providing it uh, having both interface connections USB as well as the RS-232. However, you can see here how it's using the later DE9 standard. Uh, and it also does require um, a 9 to 12 volt power pack um, in order for it to function properly. Um, and I think the baud rates on this unit were set uh, internally with software. And uh, so that was, the, the dip switches weren't needed on this model. Anyway, so that's the, the Master Blaster by Altera. That was their later JTAG pod that they provided. Then they came out with this unit. This is the Altera Byte Blaster MV, and that's a, a parallel port. So instead of using serial, they've got, this is the standard LPT parallel port, DB25, that you would connect to your, to your PC motherboard. And then you had the standard JTAG uh, interface connector there for hooking up and programming. So that was another model that was pretty popular uh, in uh, probably the mid nineties. Uh, and then probably one of the ones that you would not see, they're not as common though, and they're also just very, very expensive. Uh, this is the ethernet blaster. And so this is uh, a really, really amazing device where it allows you to essentially, you configure this unit essentially like, a, like any kind of router and uh, you can connect up to uh, your LAN connection to your PC or your network, and you just log into it uh, via web browser to configure it just like a router. And then once you have uh, the IP uh, programmed into it, uh, you can then just log into it using uh, the Altera Quartus uh, software as a uh, Ethernet Blaster device. And there's a driver for that, it's actually available uh, when you uh, go to install or select hardware. So this is a really, really cool unit, but they're extremely expensive. They're, I think around 500 or more, 500 US dollars. Um, but again, you can get them used on eBay and you might spend a couple of hundred bucks. Uh, if you're lucky, you can, you can find them pretty cheap. And they're pretty popular in like manufacturing or R&D labs uh, where they have different setups that are under test and uh, you know they have different stations that they need you know different uh, computer stations that will need to interface to them uh, you know anywhere within the company and so that's where these units come in they're very very handy so you can just patch into the network and uh, hook up and program some uh, jtag uh, devices pretty cool so one other thing i want to show you guys which is really really cool about jtag is that it's actually a JTAG chain, right? And that's essentially where you can connect multiple CPLDs or FPGAs, devices that are JTAG compliant. Uh, you can interconnect them one after the other on a, a chain, right? On, on the JTAG interface. And you're essentially hooking up part of the JTAG interface, these four pins in parallel as well as serially uh, between the devices, okay? And so as you can see in this diagram, we have essentially um, TMS and TCK are connected in parallel on the JTAG interface between all the devices, okay? So they all connect directly to TMS and TCK. However, between the devices, TDI and TDO, that's your input and output. And so essentially from one device to the next, you essentially connect those serially in a chain exactly the same way as this diagram is showing, okay? And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring in another little um, Altera development board that I have, uh, another vintage one, it's from the 90s. Okay, so here is the development board. I'll just move everything out of the way here temporarily. So now I've got uh, a five volt power supply here at the top. So what we're going to do is connect these JTAG lines to our breadboard uh, along with the CPLD that we have here uh, as part of our counting circuit. And we're just going to connect it exactly the same way as this diagram shows. 
And uh, so we're gonna be connecting TDI and TDO between the devices serially in a chain. And then the Altera Quartus software will detect both devices uh, when we do an auto detect. So I just wanna show you guys how that works. So we're gonna hook this up. Now we have a five volt uh, TTL level output here uh, that's being regulated by this uh, 7805 uh, voltage regulator device on the board. And so we're gonna take the five volt uh, signal from this output and we're gonna use that to power our breadboard and uh, the first CPLD. So then both devices will be using the same power source. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this. Just connect these interface wires here. Okay. Okay, so there we go. That's our power source. So we'll go ahead and power it up. And there we go. Now you can see we have power applied and both devices uh, are now uh, powered up and ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead to our Altera Corda software and see if we can detect both devices. Okay, so here's our circuit, uh, but we're just gonna go and we're gonna activate the programmer and here it is and as you can see we've got the usb blaster connected we're going to delete our design file from this project and hit auto connect and there we go check it out we've got the epm 7160 s as well as the epm 7128 s both devices connected on the jtag chain and that's because we've configured them uh, in the daisy chain format and they're uh, the TDI and the TDO connections uh, being connected serially. Pretty awesome. So that is today's video, everybody. We got to connect and detect multiple CPLD devices using a single USB blaster on the JTAG chain. Really amazing interface, and it's capable of so much more. And I'm gonna be going over that in the future here on my channel. Uh, in the next video that I do, I want to show you guys how we are able to program an Altera Max uh, 7000S CPLD device where we actually go in and we disable the JTAG interface by reprogramming the device so that it falls into JTAG lockout. And there's a specific way that you do that by using the Altera Cordis software uh, where you go into the menus and you essentially are reassigning the uh, JTAG interface pins to become I.O. pins as part of your circuit. And as soon as you program that device, it falls into JTAG lockout. And so that's the process I'm going to be showing you guys how these chips have fallen into these conditions where you can no longer program it using a JTAG programmer like the USB blaster. And uh, so it's just a really informative video and it's also very handy. That's why the chip was designed that way. So if you do need additional IO pins as part of a circuit that you're working on, uh, it's really, really handy because you can get an, an extra four IOs uh, to be used as part of your circuit. So it's very, very handy, but it's also, you know, it's good to know about how uh, the JTAG interface becomes disabled this way. So it's gonna be pretty informative and I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. And don't forget everybody, please visit my merch page. You get some uh, capacitor uh, water bottle tumblers. I've got capacitor mugs, all different colors and sizes. I got hats, t-shirts, uh, you name it. Uh, some cool stuff there for you guys to check out. So that's today's video, everybody. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe if you can. It's always appreciated and we'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy and bye for now. Ciao.